The Mr. Excel podcast is sponsored by Easy Excel. Learn Excel from Mr. Excel podcast episode 1943, Holiday Gift Tracker. Hey, welcome back to the Mr. Excel netcast. I'm Bill Jell and today's question is from Amy. We're talking about talking to Amy and she said, well, are you getting ready for the holidays? And I uh, kind of came up with this idea of a holiday gift tracker, right? So you have all these people you have to buy for and you have the list of gifts and you want to make sure, you know, especially if you have a lot of kids that they, they have equal amounts of presents. And Amy said, well, no, no, it doesn't really work that way because, you know, I, I have David who likes to get a bunch of small things to open, but my daughter Alyssa, uh, you know, likes to get fewer presents but more expensive presents. So today we're going to go through how to set up a holiday gift tracker in Excel uh, and there's going to be a lot of cool Excel tips and tricks here. So even if you're not in the holiday spirit or if you happen to be watching this after the holiday, uh, still lots of good stuff here. So the first thing, uh, we're going to have a couple of worksheets. Uh, the first worksheet is the list of people. The you know So simple enough to set this up and I'm going to create this, I'm going to make this into a table. Uh, so back here on the Home tab, we're going to go to Home and Format as Table. And you'll see that I've uh, actually created a custom palette here of different holiday colors. Uh, and so we'll choose uh, one of these as the table. And my table has headers. Make sure to check that. See, they didn't, somehow they were fooled there. Uh, click OK. And they give this the interesting name of Table 1, which you're allowed to change here on the Table Tools Design tab. So I'm going to uh, just call this the people table. How about that people table? All right, so now this creates a table and as we realize, oh shoot, we have to get something for, uh, you know, our ants and we add, the table automatically extends. Uh, but if I want to use this as the source for data validation, I can't refer to the table name. But what I can do is select the list of people that we already have in and name that, create a name range. So not a, a table name, but here in the name box, I want to type people, all right? So the table is called people table, but this column is called people, all right? And it actually goes away. How annoying is that? But trust me, it worked, all right? So I'm going to come here to my gifts worksheet tab, and this is where I'm going to list all of the various gifts. And here in the name column, I'll just page down a whole bunch, and we'll set up data, data validation, and we're going to say that this is going to be allowed to be from a list, and the source is going to be equal people. All right, now in the old days, back in Excel 2003, you weren't allowed to have your source here on a different worksheet, but it always worked if you had a named range. It worked out fine. All right, so we'll click OK. And then what we get is a little drop down. When you go into that cell, you can just choose from the list. Now, the big thing that I'm trying to do here, the big thing that I'm trying to do is uh, make sure that if I would add a new person, so let's come back here to the list and we'll add um, Fred who is our crazy uncle. All right, see the table automatically extended, but I want to go back and make sure that here in the dropdown that Fred appears. All right, so that's our first thing, how to make an expandable table. All right, now throughout the holiday season, you would fill this in. So I'm going to pause the netcast while I type some data. Okay, we're back. So here's a uh, sample uh, gift list. Same thing here, we want to make this into a table. So we can either use Control T or come back here to Home, Cell Styles, or I'm sorry, Format as Table, and choose one of the table formats. I'll go with one that has banded rows like that. My table has headers. All right, that way, as we add more data later, uh, it will continue to add. Now, a couple of cool things that I have set up here, and it depends on how much uh, work you want to do on this, is uh, you see that I have a, a note there on the Brighton sunglasses, and if you hover, it actually shows you a picture of that item, a picture in Excel, and there is a hyperlink there. Uh, if you click the hyperlink, it, it will take you out to the web page. All right, so how do we set up those? Let's come down here to uh, our uh, Fred, who's getting the book Power Excel from Mr. Excel. And to set up the hyperlink, it's easy. Uh, you just come to the page, click up here in the address bar, and you see that the HTTP is missing. That's a thing in Chrome, but it's actually there. So when we do Control C to copy, and then come back to Excel. All right, you're going to use Control K, Control K, to set up a new hyperlink, and it's already there in the address. Just click Control V, and click OK. All right, and now the hyperlink is set up. The picture, though, the picture is harder. So we're going to come back to the web page, and we're going to right click and say that we want to save that image as, and save it someplace where you can get it. Remember it. All right, so it's downloaded. Then back in Excel. Getting that pop-up picture, though, in is tougher. We're going to come back to the Review tab. We're going to add a new comment. 
and I want it to be a completely blank comment. All right, so backspace through the name, and then carefully, you don't want that comment to disappear, uh, resize the comment so it's about the right size. Now we want to format that comment, so I go to Control-1. Uh, now be careful here, if you get only the font tab, uh, then you didn't resize the comment. You're in edit mode, go back to the comment and resize, so that we get out of the um, get out of the, the edit mode. Come here to colors and lines where you can change the color of the comment, but even better, we're going to go down to fill effects and say that we want a picture. We're going to select the picture and you know in 2013 here they try and go offline. The picture's already on my computer. Power Excel book. Click OK, click OK. Alright, and then when we click away, see now we have a pop-up picture that appears. Alright, so you can continue as you're shopping here, adding new items to the list, but let's come back to our uh, list tab and fill in these columns with the number of items and the value of the item. So we want to do equal count if. I want to do count if and the range and criteria. Now I'm going to put a comma here and the criteria is this column A2. Close the parentheses. We'll come back then to the comma. All right, now that's on another worksheet. So I'm going to click on the other worksheet and scroll up here and just go through all of the names. Press Enter and double click to shoot that down. All right, so there we go. That's the number of items. And then value of items, we're going to use sum if. So in this case, we have two things on the other end. Just remember that we're going to use cell A2 there. So we come back to the range, choose all of the names, comma. We want to see if that's equal to A2. And if it is, add up the cost from over here. All right, and double click to copy that down. All right, so now for every person, we can see uh, you know how much, how many items they have, and how much we've spent. It'd be interesting to see this as a chart, so to create a chart from non-contiguous data, first I choose all those person names, and then I hold down the control key and do number of items. Uh, back here under inserts, choose a 2D column chart. Alright, so there's our uh, number of items chart, and then same thing we'll do for the uh, uh, dollars. Hold down the control key and maybe make this one into a pie chart. All right, and there we go. You know, okay, so now we have a couple of problems. Uh, pr one problem is that you don't want someone to accidentally open this file and see everything that's going on. So I would just come here to insert, I use the shape tools, I create a nice shape, and just cover up the entire screen like that. And same thing here on the GIFs, we'll insert, insert a shape. And cover up the entire screen. That way if they open it, uh, you know, they don't see what's going on. They just think that it's, you know, for some reason, there's nothing here. Ah, oh, there's nothing here. You know, but then you can always, uh, you know, well, if you need to see things, you can come here to Home, Find and Select. selection pane and say hide all. On the selection pane you can just say either hide all or show all and you'll be able to see those items. Of course hide the selection pane uh, before they come in. Now hey I see there's a problem here. Your, uh, Tom your CPA poor guy has nothing at all. What do you get your CPA? Well I have the perfect solution for you. Excel book 40 and I am working on my 40th book, the Mr. Excel Excel book. Excel is 40 in Roman numerals. It's going to be the 40 greatest Excel tips of all time and a very unique present, something you'll never be able to get anywhere else. Uh, it is for $24. You can uh, pre-order the book. It's an autograph book and your CPA's name will be listed in the book. Now, of course, the book doesn't come out until April, but you can tell your CPA, hey, you know, I sponsored you. Uh, you're going to be listed in Mr. Excel's book. How unique is that? I guarantee no one else uh, will get that. Well, there you go, a holiday tracker from my house to yours. I hope everyone has a great holiday. Uh, we'll be back after the holiday with another netcast from Mr. Excel.